Okay, welcome to the part of the autocrat training where we actually start running autocrat. If you watch some of the earlier videos, you should have a spreadsheet set up, whether it's tied to a Google form or not. You should have a template create, created, and now we're actually going to run through autocrat. If you're someone who likes um, some text or some screenshots and explanation, this uh, presentation that I have is linked in the comments or in the description below. Um, and you can go back and refer to it at any time just to make sure you're aware of that and let's get started. Um, so I'm going to use my, my peanut certificate again and before I get into running Autocrat, the last thing that I want to do is I want to make a folder. If you're having this generate a bunch of individual files, um, it can take up a lot of space in your Google Drive. So I'm just going to make a new folder and I'm going to send all of my certificates to be set in there so it doesn't clutter things up. So I'm just going to call it Peanuts Cert. So I'll remember the name. No one sees that part but you. Okay, so you've successfully installed Autocrat. If not, super easy to do. Um, go ahead and say open. Sometimes it'll say launch. It takes a minute to launch and it doesn't always work. Um, so fingers crossed, usually when we see the blue dots, we're good to go. Um, what's worked for me is to just close out my browser and open it back up. Sometimes that fixes it. And so since I don't have a job set up on this particular spreadsheet yet, I'm going to click new job. All right. Now there's a save button down here, but it doesn't let you save until most of the process is over anyway. So be prepared to go through the whole thing. This merge job name is just something for you. Um, if you only are going to have one process from Autocrat run on your spreadsheet, it really doesn't matter what you name it at all. Just give it something you remember. Now you're going to choose your template. Um, if you're using a dummy account to keep things separate, make sure your dummy account has access to your template. I see my certificate here. Those are my old ones, but you can search for them too. Fetching tags from the template doesn't take too long. Now we're done with that step and we can go on to the next one. Okay. So this is the part where it starts to look a little bit, a little bit hairy. Don't worry, we're okay. All of your data um, that's going to be populated into that template has to be on the same tab. Um, in this case, I only have one tab on my spreadsheet, one sheet. So make sure that all of your data is in one thing. And I'll have a video to use VLOOKUP if you need to pull things from multiple sheets. Um, but most of the time, hopefully you won't. Header row one first add a row two. So that's just saying my titles are in the first row, so ignore it. Start looking at data in row two. Um, I can't imagine why these would never be consecutive, but you never know. We're going to leave it on standard. There is a way that you can put images and things in there, which is kind of cool. Um, but for now, we're going to leave it be. Um, and we'll go back to that later. So student name is on my certificate. Remember the part that's going to have the student's name. And so I want that to map to column name. That means that anything in that name column is going to be put in where I have my student name tab. For award, that's going to map to column what did they win. You'll notice these do not have to be in order. You're just telling it, okay, if it says teacher, map to teacher. If it says date, map to date. I think if you type them in exactly the same, like case sensitive and everything, it'll auto map them, but not a big deal. The file name. So I'm going to leave this in multiple output mode. That means every time it runs, it's going to create a new file. So Charlie will get a file, Lucy will get a file, Linus will get a file. If you're wanting to print these, you should switch it to single output mode. So that means that instead of each one being a separate file, they're each going to be slides in one Google Slides document. Or if you're doing a Google Doc and having letters, they're all going to be in there. And it'll be really easy to print because they'll be just be different pages in the document. So if you are staying on single output mode, you can type in whatever you want here and it really doesn't matter. To do multiple output mode, it's nice if each of the files is the kid's name and the date or something simple like that. And there's an easy way to do that. Uh, this blue bar over here, it has all of the tags in there. So name, I can say, okay, my file is going to be named name, and then I'm going to put in a space, and then I'm going to put in today, whatever day it runs on. Okay, 
And so that's a way for me to be able to search and find. Um, down here, the type is either Google Slides or PDF. Um, you can leave it as Google Slides here, which I like to do because then I can go back in and edit it. Um, but if you change it to PDF, you can't edit it as easily. Later on in the process, if we're going to email these certificates out, we can set it so that what is emailed is a PDF, but we still have a copy of a Google Slide. So I recommend leaving it on Google Slides just for ease of use. Okay. Choosing the destination folder. So this is why we set up that folder um, at the beginning. I want peanut cert to be my folder. That's going to be where all of the things go. really don't know why example is here. <laughs> That's kind of weird. I don't think I've run this before, but okay, whatever. We're going to ignore step six for now. I may have a video on it later. We're going to ignore step seven for now. I will have a video on that later. Um, maybe vice versa. I don't know. So for now, I'm going to say no, we're not going to share docs and send emails. That's going to be a separate video if that's something you're wanting to do. Uh, it's a little bit lengthier of a process, and so I don't want to get us bogged down in it here. So for now, we're going to leave it for no, which means it's just going to generate the files and not email them. So you'll have to watch the next one if you want assistance on that process. And then our final step is to add and remove job triggers. Um, I'm going to leave this as no because this isn't tied to a form. Uh, you can have it set up so that if you're getting form data, it triggers that every time a form is filled out, it'll send it out. A time trigger, you can set it to anything between one hour and 24 hours here. I'm going to leave them for no. I'm, I'm just going to keep them on that. So what this means is that I'm going to have to go in and run it by hand, and I'll show you how to do that. I'll add another video that gives you a little bit more um, information about triggers, but that's the basic idea. And now this is the last step, so I can finally click Save. And you'll see that nothing really happens, okay? But that's because I don't have a trigger set up. There's no form data that's being added. There's no time trigger. So what I need to do is I need to go here and hit play to run the job. And I would just do that every time. <laughs> I was not expecting that to follow me around. Okay. Uh, all right. So <laughs> every time you want to run, like say you add some more certificates, you would just do the same thing we did at the beginning where you go to add on, go to autocrat and then um, click here on run job. Your other options are to edit. And so that'll just take you through the nine step process. Um, preview job details is just a short version of some of the steps. Um, and then you can delete it as well. Oh, it looks like it started moving. Let's go ahead and run it. See what happens. The first time it takes a little bit to walk through, you can see that it's created four new um, columns on my spreadsheet. And this one's always just going to be gibberish. That has, has a link to the um, created document. This is the link to the created document. Um, and then this says your information about it. So if it says document successfully created, etc., you're good. You can see if it's in the process, it'll say starting at. Um, Autocrat does every once in a while send me an email saying your job failed to run or trigger not activated or something. And every time I've gone back in, um, it's looked like it's run fine. So I think what happens is that if you have it set to run on form trigger um, and it's having some kind of a hiccup with its system, too much bandwidth, something, um, it won't necessarily run, but then it goes back and tries to run it again. So by the time I get in there and catch it, it's already rerun the job and it's fine. Okay, so that's it. You'll see that each of these certificates that has been generated the preview looks wrong, um, which always freaks me out a little bit. But then when you go into it, it looks totally fine. So that is our certificate, and that is how to run a basic autocrat job.